I'm Pastor Duncan. Welcome to Change the World Church. It's September 12, 2021. Let's pray. All right, thank you, Father God, for this day and just your amazing grace. And um, as we think about um, just all that's going on and the way that you will destroy the world next with the fire and destruction as you did with water before in the flood, and uh, reflecting on the last days, things from all the way from fires and hurricanes and floods and just the, the virus, everything that's going on now. Um, and then September 11th, we think about terrorism and destruction and the world's changing, the way it's rapidly changing. and everything going on. We trust in you, we put our full hope in you, and we, we behave in a godly, holy way, uh, or burning, yearning to do so, Lord, in your grace and forgiveness as we pursue you, Lord, in scripture, renewing our mind, soul, and heart in scripture, and on our knees in repentance. We always go to you, Lord, every day, morning and evening, we come to you, Lord, and I bow before you, you're the almighty creator who created everything from the beginning to the end and all things in your purpose and for your glory. Father God, we just pray that you continue every day as we pursue you to fill us and live in a holy way worthy of you and continue in that repentant way, pursuing you after receiving you, writing our names in the book of life, that we would pursue you and not have the name blotted out, Lord but continue so that the new creation, new heaven, new earth, they come and we are taken up with you and a part of it at judgment. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So open your Bibles and um, living, breathing Word of God. And we uh, expect you to have a physical Bible, an actual physical Bible where you can, good study Bible where you can write in, write notes, concordances, verses that correlate, underlying verses as the Lord speaks to you and or things need to come out or as we review um, Greek, the Strong's and the Hebrew and as things come out of the Greek and Hebrew that you see physically right and um, make the uh, corrections to your current translation uh, as the Lord shows us um, the definition from the original Greek and Hebrew and the way it's written and correlate those with the different scriptures also that the Lord shows us all going together. In our current translation, and we will we'll go through the appropriate um, verses um, in the next part, but just reading in today, um, uh, I think I have the NASB, you guys have the ESV, and what we have today, we'll read first out of this. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by the way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. The title of today's sermon is 2 Peter chapter 3. The Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, comma, but is patient toward you, but is patient toward you. not wishing for any to perish not wishing for any to perish not wishing for any to perish comma but for all to come to repentance. 
but for all to come to repentance. But for all to come to repentance. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way. Comma. What sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Comma, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? If you miss that, it's basically um, verses 9 and verses 11, 2 Peter 3. So you can go back and look at that to fill in. Verse, starting with verse 1. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder, that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice. They do not see. They're unable to comprehend. They do not mention. They ignore the fact that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago. And the earth was formed by God out of water and by the waters through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word, the word of God, who is Christ, who is Lord, Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords, by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved now for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you but is patient towards you. Not washing, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Not wishing for any to perish, but for all, wishing for all to come to repentance, wishing for all, not wanting any to perish, but wishing for all and wanting for all to come to repentance, all, pass all, everyone, wishing for everyone to come to repentance. The Lord God Almighty in Christ, the Holy Spirit, three in one, not wishing for any person, woman or man, not wishing for anyone to perish, but wanting every single person, man, woman, and child, every single person of the age of accountability who has comprehension around age seven, wanting or whenever the Lord decides to bring comprehension, at whatever age the Lord decides to bring accountability and comprehension, 
not wishing any to perish, but for all to come to repentance for every single man, woman, person, for every single boy and girl, every single man and woman to repent of their sins, come to repentance, repent of their sins, receive Christ, and receive eternal life and avoid perishing in the damnation of eternal hell. He wants everyone. Lord Jesus Christ, not wishing anyone to perish. Not wishing anyone to perish, but for all to repent. I think that's pretty clear. The Word of God speaks for itself. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, fire, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. How should you act? What conduct should you have but holiness and godliness? How should you behave with the coming of the judgment of God and everything being burned up in intense heat and fire? How should you behave except in holy conduct and actions and godliness? How should you behave every day, day in and day out? Holy conduct and godly behavior. The day is coming like a thief. In an instant, everything will be burned up in judgment, and God is coming, the Lord God is coming, and in fact is here right now with us. How should you behave but in holy conduct and godliness? As he says, there's no trouble telling you these things again. I have no trouble telling you these things again. Scripture says But according to his promise, we are looking for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. There will be a new heaven and a new earth and a new order. Christ reigns. There will only be the holy that repented and there only can be holy in Christ through his grace by repenting and seeking God and persevering in holiness whose names are in the book of life after repenting and receiving Christ and are not blotted out because they did not turn away and they persevere to the end in holy conduct and behavior. Those will reign with Christ in his glory on our faces, worshiping, singing God, or however it is, we will reign with him forever and ever in the new heavens and the new earth forever. In the new heavens and new earth, all mourning, all tears wiped away, Christ coming back victorious on the white horse, the sword of the Lord, and the word of his mouth destroying everything. Michael the archangel being allowed to bound Satan for a thousand years, Satan being released, God and me, God, everything like the hordes of the earth coming against the new city, the beloved city of Jerusalem, coming against the saints, and God raining down fire and destroying everything. 
the prophet, the, the, all the madness that comes from Satan and Satan himself being bound and thrown into the eternal lake of fire, sulfur burning and suffering forever and ever and ever, along with all those who fail to repent and receive the good grace of God that he's offered for eternal purpose in life now and eternal life forever. Damnation and suffering and burning because you failed to humble yourself and repent and receive Christ or you repented, received Christ and persevered in that faith and in that following of Christ and on the straight road and forever reigning with Christ, forever being with Christ and serving and having that purpose, that glorious purpose in the new heavens and earth. It's a simple choice. It is a simple choice. Repent and receive Christ, your maker who made you for that very purpose. Or refuse and go for sin. The wanton pleasures of the world. The pride of life. The, the, the demigod, the riches, devoid of Christ and for the pleasures of the world. You either in or out. You either go for Christ or you divert and go for sin. You can't die, you can't have it both ways. You either go for Christ or you refuse. And face destruction by fire and eternal damnation at judgment day. And devoid of the only way you can have life and purpose and deep joy and perseverance in the trials. And with all the before, even before the warnings and of all the warnings and all the patience God has exhibited you to ignore that gift of life and eternal grace he's intended the best for you because he's all good and all light according to John and 1 John But according to his promise, we are looking for the new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Isaiah 65, 17 through 18, I will create, see, I will create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered nor they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem, Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. Just the saints. Who continued to who repented, humbled themselves, repented, received Christ, renovated themselves, were turned around, saved, were saved in Christ, baptized by His Holy Spirit, obedient to Christ in all that He asked. And we know what that entails, and persevered in Him to the end. Therefore, beloved, verse 14, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard, regard the patience, reverently, reverently regard the, the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom by the Holy Spirit given to him, wrote to you also in his letters speaking in them of these same things in which some things are hard to understand which the untaught and unstable false prophets distort as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction distorting the scriptures to their own destruction Their own destruction. Distorting the scriptures to their own destruction. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord 
and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for giving your scripture just straightforward. We just adhere and cherish and love and respect your patient respect, your sacrifice you gave on the cross. You died, you sent your son, you created the world, you created us to worship and just worship you in joy and love and, and peace and full purpose. We thank you, God, for that. And we praise you, God, for that. And we offer our, our hearts and our, and our sacrifices and treasure and heart and mind and soul to you and dedicate everything we have to you. Jesus' name we pray. And I thank you, Father God, for this. We humbly bow before you, God. Thank you. Just thank you for it. Amen. Welcome back to our praise and worship. We're here with Go for Christ Hebrews 412 Ministries. Rachel Duncan. We take the living, breathing word of God and put it to music and sing the scripture penetrates mine. Our body and soul. All right, thank you, Lord. We just dedicate this to you. You, you're the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Your word is all powerful. Just send me prayer. Amen. This is Psalm 25, 12 through 22.
Christ. Open the Word of God to 2 Peter chapter 3. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of this coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. So let's read, uh, read Genesis 1. So how are they behaving before the flood? Very wicked. Just wickedness. God was completely put up with them. This is Genesis 1, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens, and separate the day from the night. And let there be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them up in the expanse of the heavens, to give light to the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is 
on the face of the earth, and every tree with its seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every creeping bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Amen. There's been controversy. The creation of the world, the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and everything under the earth, too. God created everything. There's no mystery. There's no mystery. Beginning picking up with verse 5. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water. Does that sound familiar? Through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. The first old world was destroyed by the flood around 1700 years after making 300 years later after Noah you had Abraham a thousand years later you had King David a thousand years later you had Christ the Son of God in 2000 years and some change we're here Verse 7 and verse 6 destroy being flooded with water because of their sinful nature. But God, out of his grace, spared Noah, who was a righteous man, and five other souls. Seven other souls. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Let's read Revelation 20. <clears throat> Revelation 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, and they will be the priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them for battle. And to gather them for battle. Their numbers is their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, but fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were. And they were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. 
From his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written on, what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 3, 1 through 6. So if your name's not found in the book of life, you're thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, Revelation 3, 1 to 6. So therefore, how shall we live? Holy. Holy, godly, and persevering. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven, the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die, for I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people of Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name for my, before my Father and before his saints. Angels, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So you come like a thief in the night, and he who perseveres and overcomes, he'll not blot his name out from the book of life, blot it out. Okay, Revelation 17. <clears throat> then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality. So this is regarding um, mockers will come, mock you, but persevere, be holy, because God reigns and everything will be destroyed by fire. So let's walk through what ha the mockers side of the house and what happens to those to them versus the holy. With the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on the earth have become drunk. Ba Babylon represents the epitome and base of evil of, of man's just abomination, the sinful core capital of sin and every person in sinful um, aptitude or following a sinful path is completely in an adoration of Babylon from merchants to centers of everything and every type is all is, is paying homage to Babylon that's their core seat of power of the of wickedness and he carried away in me in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was the name was written a name of mystery, Babylon, the great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw Versus her... Versus holy, pure water of the purity of Christ, living water of Christ. When I saw her, I marveled greatly. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? Probably wonder, was shocked. 
I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit. And go to destruction and the dwellers on the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come this calls for a mind with wisdom i need to clarify that what was that last verse she read oh 17 8 17 8 yeah right. so let's clarify that because it's a um, different, very different than the way it's translated. Okay, so going down uh, halfway through whose names were not written in the book of life, right? Yes, sir. Okay, start there. Grapho, literally engraving writing, engraving, like written in such a way that it's engraved, like engraven in the book of life, like engraved. I mean, that's engraved in the book of life. So Grapho. Who not at all engraved. So engraved, written, not at all. Not at all, Grapho. Inscribed, engraved. Can you picture that? Like some, like a God's holy pen and literally sinking in to the book of life. Like the depth of it and literally carved, engraved in the most holy way, sunk into the book of life. Like in the book of life, which is Christ's life, right? So how can you get in the, the logos of, of Zoe, life, Christ? Because he is the logos of life. That's, and you have in Christ. See that? The names are engraved, not at all engraved. Epi, in relation to Biblion. The word for book of life is Biblion. The lot, I'm pretty sure the Latin word for book is Bible. <laughs> like, it's just the book. It needs no reference. Biblion, scroll. Yeah. Thank you. Zoe, life, literally life. Apo, usually denotes separation from, of, separation, catabole, the founding, or conceiving of life. So separation from the founding of cosmos. The world. So, when their names were not engraved into the Book of Life, they were separated from, or in separate separation of the conceiving of the world. So, rather than saying from being set, they weren't not engraved from the foundation of the world, as it's written. They were separated regarding the found, foundation of the world when their name was not engraved or found. Because they weren't engraved, then they were separated regarding the world. Not since. Big difference. Big difference, right? So I really want to nail that down. You see the difference? <laughs> so doesn't that always bother you? It's always bothered me. Your spirit.
apo, because of, out of, usually the separation departure from. So separation, they were separated from the world. Separation regarding the beginning of the world. Because their name was not a grave. You see that? Okay. Let's leave it at that. I'll continue with 17. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. There are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, and the other is not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was... In the and that fits with the Roman emperors of the time, too. The time of this writing. That fits. And the Bible says... Um, There'll be many antichrists. In fact, there have already been many antichrists and to come. But, you know, it's not over until Christ comes, right, and rides on the horse. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour, together with the beast. They are for one mind. That has not yet occurred. And they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those with him are called the chosen and faithful. Oh, that's really... And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw, where the prostitute is seated, are the peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute, and they will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is a great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. 18. Revelation 18. It's Revelation 18. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For the nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual morality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out to her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. For her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others, and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she has mixed. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her like, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. For this reason her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and fat famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, 
Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for hers, since no one buys their cargo any more, cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is, human souls. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares, who gained wealth from her, will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, so, ba so will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sounds of harpists and musicians, of flute players and trumpeters, will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of a bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, and all your nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all who had been slain on earth. Verse 19, or chapter 19, Revelation 19. After these things I heard something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, because his judgments are true and righteous. For he has judged the great harlot who is corrupting the earth with her immorality, and he has avenged the blood of his bondservants on her. And a second time they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a, and a voice came from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God, all you his bondservants, you who fear him, the small and the great. Then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude, and like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Can you imagine? <laughs> Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God. Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written on him, which no one knows except himself. He is clothed, clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on 
white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that it may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Then I saw, <clears throat> saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which fly in mid-heaven, Come, assemble for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of commanders, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves, and small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who had, who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. I'm looking at chapter 20. Again. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him so that he would not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. 666. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who is part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and Christ will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. And the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the Biblio of life. Zoe. Of Zoe. Good. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Perseverance, right? Salvation in Christ, but perseverance in that faith. And continuing that life, faith produces what? Appropriate lifestyle. Deeds. Appropriate lifestyle. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found 
Grapho, right? Engraved in the Book of Life, Biblio of Zoe. He was thrown into the lake of fire. Continuing, 1 Peter 3, 8, verse 8. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you. Not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, which the heavens will pass away with the roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, fire, right? And the earth and its works will be burned up. We just read that. Open your strongs. Second Peter. Chapter three. Verse nine. Let's go through it. Curios, the supreme authority, controller, the respectful title, most respectful title for God, Lord, Master, Sir. Graduno, delay. Or Terry. Ooh, not at all. Not delay or Terry. Raduno. Terry? No, not at all delay or, or Terry. Epigalio. A pledge, a divine assurance, a message of promise. Regarding his divine message of promise. Hosts, according that, toward, or as, tis any man, diverse man, any diverse man, hegome, with official authority, deem or consider, like consider or deem, like somebody authoritatively may seem or deem tardiness. Allah, but completely going the other way, how be it, notwithstanding that condemnation from that man, diverse man's thoughts, but Macrothumio is forbearing, long suffering. Look at that word. For look at that word. Forbearing, long suffering, enduring, patiently long suffering and enduring that diverse man's opinion. Who's worldly trying to be authoritative but is not. Patiently enduring long sufferingly. Long suffering, how? Abundantly, far exceedingly. Yes. Hemus, concerning us, ourselves. Exceedingly patient and long suffering, enduring, concerning ourselves. Me, not Bulume, not willing, not. To be willing or minded, not willing, tis that any diverse man, the same diverse man that made the condemnation, not willing that any diverse man, Apollumi, be destroyed. Not only perish and be completely destroyed, not willing that any diverse man whatsoever should be fully destroyed or perish or lost. Allah, howbeit, nevertheless, but 
Pass. What is pass? Everyone. All. Completely. Every single person. Every. All. Every man, woman, and child. All. Correo. To be admitted. Receive. To be admitted. Pass through. To the banquet, right? To the wedding, to heaven, to eternal life. Pass through, be admitted. Receive. Be received, admitted, and pass through. How do you be admitted, received, and pass through? He is far more exceedingly concerning through the manner of Metaneo. Meta new. Meta transformation. Nua being new. Meta new. Changing into newness. Meta, like metamorphing like a worm to a butterfly into a new creation. Meta Noah. What a cool word. Meta Noah meaning reversal of one's decision. Repentance. From metanoia, which means think differently or afterwards morally feel compunction, repent. Morally feel compunction, changing into newness afterwards, after repentance, which is part of repentance. And there's being admitted and therefore not being destroyed. Excellent. So who does God want to be admitted, changed, become new? He wishes for all to come to repentance. And wishes for no one to what? Be destroyed completely. So let's read that grouping again. 8 through 10. Because you're, you're not going to believe this next part. Every part is amazing. Every part. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved. Beloved. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ that we love. That with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And you would love anyone because you want them to come to repentance. One day is like a thousand years. A thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise. As some people may count slowness, but as long sufferingly patient towards you, not wishing willing or wishing for any to perish and be destroyed, but for all to come to repentance at a new metanoah. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat fire, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Psalm ninety. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust. You say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when in the past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength, eighty. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with our steadfast love. Sorry, your steadfast love. 
that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your works be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. But that. Second right. Peter 3, verses 11 to 13. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Revelation 20, 1 through 4. We're looking for a new heavens and a new earth. And we can um, discuss that while we're... Oh. 21 through 4. Okay. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the pit, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those whom the authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or on their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. New heaven, new earth. After the other had occurred. Fourteen through sixteen, Second Peter. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. Regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom, right, of the Holy Spirit by God given him, wrote to you, as also in his letter, speaking of these things. And what are some things? So, Paul also speaking in wisdom, speaking of these things. Philippians 3.20 320 for our citizenship is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for a savior the lord jesus christ so we eagerly wait for a citizenship eagerly waiting for the lord 
1 Corinthians 1, 7. So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Titus 2, 13. 2, verse 13. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sounds like Paul from the Wisdom of the Holy Spirit's oh, writing similar things. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Jude 1.21 Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads us to eternal life. So, perseverance. Waiting, amen. Or I should just say G21, sorry. Yeah. Romans 8, 23. 8, 23. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Does this sound like things? Mm -hmm. Go back to verse 16. 15. I saw so our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you who also in his letters, speaking to them of these things, in which some things are hard to understand which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures, demonically twisting scripture to their own, as we've been reading, their own profit, their own gain, their own fame, all the sins. And what do they do? Remember, they ran headlong, diverted off the path, and just to sin and miss the kingdom that way, unless they stay on track and persevere and repent. But the Lord, the Lord knows and judges. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away, right? Swept away and carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall, fall away from your own steadfastness. Be careful not to be carried away right off the path and fall away From your current own steadfastness, but grow in the instead grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Father God, we give you the glory. We persevere in you. Thank you for your grace. We repent and persevere in you every day, Lord, in your scripture, renewing and living holy, godly lives, avoiding sins of the world, and true to scripture, and just preach scripture. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen.